final EIR. And the required mitigation measures to avoid or reduce significant environmental effects of the project are the same as for the project variant presented in the mitigation monitoring and reporting program, which is provided as an attachment. The MMRP describes each required mitigation measure and how it could be implemented by the project sponsor, the port, or other agencies or parties. The CEQA findings conclude that with implementation of the required feasible mitigation measures, all significant effects on the environment from implementation of the project would be eliminated or substantially lessened. All mitigation measures identified in the final EIR that are applicable to the project are contained in the NMRP and recommended for adoption as part of this approval action. In approving the CEQA findings, the Port Commission determines that any remaining significant effects on the environment found to be unavoidable are acceptable due to specific overriding economic, technical, legal, social, and other considerations described below under conclusion and staff recommendation. A brief overview of project benefits to the city and the region. The project has a housing, new housing for the city, 134 units. The project also funds affordable housing, $6 million will be paid as an MAC payment to the city's mayor's office of housing. Additionally, the developer is contributing $2.2 million to fund an additional $2.2 million to fund housing in the city. The project has parks and open space as discussed previously, new neighborhoods serving retail uses. The project greatly improves transportation, uh, and pedestrian, and circulation improvements on the site that are currently blocked. And the project has high land use and urban design elements that redevelop an underutilized urban infill site currently consisting of a surface parking lot and a health club surrounded by a 14 foot tall chain link fence. Finally, the project has economic impacts including 250 construction jobs and 140 permanent employment opportunities supporting the project's new residential and commercial uses. Project benefits specific to the port include continuing the port's efforts that began with the ferry building, Pier 1, and Piers 1 and 3 and 5, to revitalize the port's waterfront and realize the vision of the port's waterfront land use plan, the Jackson Street and Pacific Avenue corridors that will be reopened, substantial benefits, including both one-time payments and ongoing payments, revenue from the Infrastructure Financing District, as proposed as part of this project, underground parking facilities, including no less than 175 public parking spaces, a widened Drum Street walkway, a distinctive waterfront design and presence, and a destination that appeals to residents of San Francisco and the Bay, as well as to visitors from outside the region. Removal of the only curb cut on the inland side of the Embarcadero between King and Bay Streets, and design that complements the Embarcadero National Historic District. Today's hearing is a major step forward in the continuing process of transforming the waterfront to the vision of the Waterfront Land Use Plan. The benefits of having this active new use on the waterfront will be enjoyed for many generations by residents and visitors alike. Additionally, the project will generate stable new revenue to the city and the region and the port. Should you approve the project before you today, the following additional approvals must be obtained before the port will convey the transaction documents and before construction can proceed. These include state lands approval of the trust exchange agreement, approval by the Board of Supervisors of the lease, purchase and sale agreement, the trust exchange agreement, and the maintenance agreement and the issuance of building and equipment permits that allow construction to commence. Beginning with the 2008 request for proposals, support working with its development partner, the city, regulatory agencies, and numerous stakeholders has diligently pursued and patiently shepherded the development of Seawall Lot 351. Because of the importance of the site to the port and the city, the agreements before the Port Commission and the public contain particular provisions to ensure that excellence 
and integrity, integrity of design, construction, and management are appropriate for this highly visible, highly valuable location. Through the provision of market rate and affordable housing, new parks, expanded open space, vibrant retail, and an appropriate amount of off-street parking, the Seawall Lot 351 8 Washington Project completes the vision for the ferry, the ferry building waterfront area, carefully delineated in a plan, in the waterfront land use plan, and so well expressed by the public-private investments of recent years at the ferry building, Pier 1, Piers 1 and a half, 5 and 7, and the market area roadway. With great respect for these major accomplishments, Fort staff respectfully request that you adopt the CEQA findings before you, that you adopt the mitigation and improvement measures and the mitigation monitoring and reporting program, and finally that you approve the transaction documents and the schematic drawings. Finally, it has been a privilege to serve as project manager in this project, and I would like to take a moment to recognize the many dedicated people I've had the pleasure to work with fostering and nurturing SF Waterfront Partners' vision for Seawall 351. From Port Staff Director Moyer, Byron Brett, Byron Rett, Jonathan Stern, Diane Oshima, Brad Benson, and Kathleen Dyha, collectively and tirelessly have shaped this project. Grace Park and Joanne Sakai from the City Attorney's Office have provided legal counsel and direction on countless issues. From City Planning, Director Ram, Bill Wyckoff, Kevin Guy, Nani Terrell, and Paul Maltzer have been outstanding professional colleagues. And from the Recreation and Park Department, Lisa Byer effectively explained the nuances of shadow analysis. And then there's our development partner, San Francisco Waterfront Partners, tenaciously and graciously led by Simon Snellgrove and Alicia Alban, and capably assisted by Paul Osmondson, Julian Snellgrove, and their outstanding team, including Trey Hartman and SOM. Thank you for your consideration of the proposal before you today. I'm available with other staff to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. And I have a motion to approve. So Public comment. We do have quite a bit of public comment. First up, John Casey. and I'm a long-term resident of San Francisco, although I'm not a native. And uh, I'm in support of, I'm here supporting me of Washington uh, because of the many public benefits that it offers. Earlier this month, I sat through the supervisor's hearings. I arrived there promptly at 1.30, expecting to be out of there maybe at Three, oh, five. We'll be out of there by five. And then at eight, finally it ended after midnight. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we kind of got what we wanted. Uh, but I wanted to say, you know, I listened to so many things. I, I'm not a young man. And I listened to so many people who objected to uh, this project due to the fact that their health wasn't good, uh, the swimming pool was there, the tennis courts were there, and their arthritis would be helped and was optimal. And I thought, well, we've got to look at the good, of, the good for the city here. And I know having lived here all these years, thank goodness the Embarcadero Freeway is gone. Union Square has been rebuilt beautifully. Stewart Street, all of these things have happened over the objections of many people. One thing that didn't change was the building of the cable cars, the re rebuilding of the cable cars. And gentlemen, this is not the cable car proposal here. This is uh, very simply this. The children, the children who we've talked about who are, are, have been told have the opportunity to go to day camp there at $100 a day right now or you can be a member of the club for a thousand dollars. Maybe that's not true. Anyway, I'll be very quick. The court is going to receive a hundred million dollars here. There's going to be bigger and better outdoor pools. Find a new fitness building, the top of green. Thank you. 
I'm going to call the next two so that after the next speaker you'll know who you are. Richard Rosenberg and then after that Paula Hewitson. Can we just ask whoever's phone alarm keeps going off, can you turn it off so it doesn't keep dating every couple of minutes? Good afternoon, Commissioners. Uh, appreciate the opportunity to speak on behalf of uh, the project, the Washington Project. I, I, I have been a member of the Western Athletic Club for quite some time and used the tennis courts, but yet I'm speaking for the project. And I also have, I have a law office that is close to Pier 31. When I'm too lazy to walk, uh, I use that parking lot that, that is currently open to the public. And uh, so I have a stake in the current disposition of the project the current disposition of the status quo and also what changes might be made. It appears to me, based on what I've read and what I've seen and what I've heard, that the proposal by the Pacific Waterfront Partners and the Port is a vast improvement over the parking lot and the tennis courts that now occupy uh, the site. Based on the work uh, of the same team, and this site has been uh, virtually the same for the last 40 years, the question is, is it going to stand for another 40 years as it, as it stands now in, in, its, in its current uh, devolving state? Uh, based on the work of the same team just across the street, it, I don't see that it's much of a question about the kind of project they, they can produce and have produced to, to introduce a certain quality to the street. Um, and as the port, uh, as the port uh, staff has just concluded, there's a substantial amount of, of funds that are going to be brought to the, both, the, both to the port and to the city, money that can be used to help other projects down on the waterfront. The opponent's spin uh, on this project uh, has been that it's just for the 1%. And the implication is that the current project, the current uh, the status quo, has been for the underprivileged. And this hardly can be the case. As you've just heard some indication of that, the current, current, uh, the current situation is a private tennis court, private parking, which um, I'll just end with Johnny Cochran might end, is that the status quo has to go. Thank you. And after Paul Hewitson, Alan Mark, would you get ready? Hi, Paula Hewitson. I'm just a neighbor who lives along the waterfront who became interested in this about a year and a half ago, began following newspaper reports. I've attended a numerous of these sessions. Um, I was very open-minded and remain so, but I do believe that Aid Washington is the right project and this is the right time and we're just stepping all over each other, can't get out of our own tracks, we need to move forward with this. It's a good project for the city of San Francisco. Thank you. <coughs> okay, after Alan Mark, Danny Campbell. Thank you, Commissioners. I'm Alan Mark. I'm president of the Mark Company. And a key part of our business is focusing on research on residential housing in San Francisco. Uh, right now, the drop in for sale housing, new for sale housing, has been 70% since the peak in 2007. By the end of the year, the drop will be about 80%, and the first quarter next year, about uh, up to 90% of the drop. Uh, the, the great thing about this project, it offers a lot of benefits, but the salient benefits, I'd say there are four of them. One, a brand new park. Two, no maintenance costs. Three, $11 million towards affordable housing. And we know there's no redevelopment agency. And four, really a final solution to the issue and dilemma of parking at the ferry building. Uh, I do think that the staff and community have worked really hard over decades, really planning for the use of the waterfront. Uh, I think this project really represents what has been intended and what has been in mind, that it would be an asset to the waterfront. And I strongly urge the comm commissioners to support this, as I do. Thank you. After Danny Campbell, Janet, uh, you? Friends of Fog. Good afternoon, Commissioners. I'm Danny Campbell, Sheet Metal Workers, Local Union 104. I just wanted to uh, say to you that uh, this is a very smart project. Um, as I said before the Board of Supervisors, it's a really good project for the city, many great benefits to uh, 
uh, you know, to the port as well as the city. And um, I just hope that you today you uh, move forward and adopt the CEQA findings. On behalf of the eight, approximately 8,000 women and men of Chicago Workers from the Ford, thanks very much for your time. Janet. <coughs> and after Janet, Marion Wallace. Good afternoon. My name is Janet Lautenberger. I'm a Bay Area native and an 18-year resident of San Francisco. Uh, I'm one of the thousands who have spoken in meetings, written our elected officials' letters, and sign petitions in opposition to the 8 Washington development. I ask that my statements be made as part of the public record here today. Despite the cons constraints that are always placed on those of us who oppose this project, we have tried to explain to you that there are numerous reasons why the proposal is not in keeping with the cohesive vision of our unique and world-famous waterfront area. We have explained how it will ruin an important and close-knit San Francisco neighborhood and destroy a citywide recreational community and its assets. We have argued that a 400 car parking garage is not what a transit rich city needs. And we have argued against the heightened bulk limits that have stood for years and are now being ignored. The public has spoken very loud and clear, but no one seems to be listening. We have tried to explain how there are alternatives that could provide a truly smart waterfront development that does not have a devastating environmental impact on this area. We have tried to explain why this proposal for exclusive, outrageously expensive residential housing does not comply with either letter or the spirit of the public trust, but you do not listen. We do not believe that this is a good financial deal for either the city or the port when you look at the details. It is illusory and much of the financial details have yet to be seen or explained, but you do not listen. Our lawyers have tried to explain how this proposal breaks past promises to the citizens of San Francisco and why it should not be approved, but again, people do not listen. So we have come to one conclusion. Rather than waste our breath this afternoon and engage in one more meeting that proves to be an exercise in futility where we speak but no one listens, I speak on behalf of FOG and those who oppose the 8 Washington development when we stand up, walk out, and conserve our energy and strength for the next step in this battle. Please know we are steadfast and unified in opposition to the 8 Washington development and have plenty of fight left to try and save the future of our city's beautiful northern waterfront area before it is too late. Thank you. Mary Wallace, and after that, Corinne Woods. I guess I'll be walking out too, but it's my turn to go ahead. Um, I'm against the proposal. It seems especially imprudent to increase the height limit at the water of San Francisco. Once it's done, it's easy for another development. This is a very small development, and this will seem very dangerous and lacking in respect for the water. There also seems dangerous to plant an underground garage on landfill at the waterfront. That seems insane. And why is it being handled by a Delaware LLC? And how are they guaranteeing upholding their agreements? How are they securing that? And there are already many unused retail opportunities in San Francisco. The ones are too high. I bet these ones are going to be too high too. So, um, the Good afternoon, commissioners. Uh, once again, I'm Toby Levine, and 
I'm a retired planning commissioner, and during that time when I was on the commission, I was also on the Waterfront Land Use Advisory Board. And during that time, we spent six years developing uh, uh, Proposition H, H mandate to plan the waterfront. And the plan